Hey you guys, what is up? This is OJ Senpai here today to do a review of Magi 231. Hold on a second. Let's get it. Okay, so I'm going to do a review of Magi chapter 231. Alright, so, so this is after the break. Um, pretty much we come back to Solomon. It's been two days since the fight between him and Elder David, and he comes back and he sees that the cross, um, <clears throat> not the cross um, species, but the other species that don't have to worry about, you know, losing their loved ones, they're all happy and stuff, you know, Elder David is dead, you know, the summoning towers, you know, all the towers are gone, and they're just all pretty much happy, but the humans, obviously, of course, are not happy, because, well, <sighs> they lost their loved ones, Pretty much. So we have Ethan losing Seda, Wahid and Falan, they lost um, Tess, and pretty much all the magicians are sad because, you know, the humans actually lost a lot of people in Elder David's genocide slash attack. So pretty much we see Solomon, and Solomon is like out of his bed, ready to go and stuff. And we see Ugo. Now, here's where I'm kind of iffy about Ugo's behavior in this chapter. Pretty much the dude is sad because he couldn't crack the code in enough time to save his friends and the rest of the humans from Elder David's attack. So he's sitting there and he's like, oh man, you know, I couldn't crack that code long enough, the berry didn't go down long enough, it's all my fault, it's all my fault. And people were like, oh man, Ugo's such a bitch. I'm like, well, and then at the first I was iffy about it because I'm like, well, Ugo, like, you have to understand where Ugo is, Ugo is going through. He kind of is the reason as to why they couldn't get out of the barrier to save their friends that easily. And he feels bad. But at the same time, within this chapter, we have Solomon say something that makes me change my mind. And what he says pretty much is everything that happened in the past couple days has already been decided by destiny or by fate, whichever you want to go with. And, you know, we can't bring back the dead. So is Ugo a bitch? Kind of. But you can still see why he's so sad because, you know, I mean, it's not easy. Plus, that thing was, what, like, centuries old? That something, like, had so much magoi that it was extremely hard to break? I mean, granted, he is the world's, according to Solomon, he is the world's strongest magician. But, you know, that took a long time. It took, like, a long time considering the fact that a bunch of people within the resistance area died, like, through that. So... I can understand when people say he's a bitch, but I still kind of give him some, like, leeway. Because, I mean, you know, he had to do something that was really difficult. And despite the fact that we could, that Solomon considers him to be the strongest magician, even if he's really powerful, you know, just, it, it didn't work out, you know. So, I'll give Ugo that. Now, we have pretty much Solomon trying to apologize to everyone. Pretty much saying, oh, you know, you guys, I'm sorry, I couldn't help you guys in your time of need. And Ethan comes up. Now, Ethan, he's not mad, apparently, that, he, like, he's not mad at Solomon. He's not mad at Solomon, really. Like, he's he's more mad at the fact that Seta, Tess, and all the other humans dying were meaningless. Because they couldn't save them in time. And so, like... It's like they died in vain, pretty much. And Solomon, he realizes this. And he says, you know what? To pay for my wrongdoings, I bet you I can get access to that Magoi that Elder David had around his castle. You remember the Magoi that developed, developed that huge barrier? And Solomon is thinking, you know what? There has to be a place where that Magoi came from. And so Solomon pretty much is like, I'm going to find out. And he's going to go back to the palace but he uses David's staff and what happens is is that it creates a rift and it go it sends Solomon, Arba, Sheba and Ugo into another dimension and we find out apparently that in this dimension this is where God is this is where Eli lies and when we see him he's pretty much he's still flowing with energy quote unquote he's still flowing with energy but the energy that we see isn't white like we would normally see. It's black. And all of a sudden, we see Arba. Arba, she's 
she's crying, like she's literally cry crying. She's like, oh my gosh, our savior. And he, she just puts her arms out. It, it's it's like, dude, it's like insane. And it, she's just sitting there crying the entire time. Like, you know, why would they do this to you? Why would Elder David do this to our father? And Solomon is like, is this where an Elder David got his macula from? And you have to think about it. It makes sense because how did Elder David, even if it's centuries over time, how did Elder David create that much ma like get that much magla in the first place? Because originally it was impossible for even Solomon or his or his father to do that. So more than likely, this is a portal to this dimension that that's how David got the uh, the magla. Now. And pretty much we say we have Solomon saying at the end of the chapter, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, why did the Elder David send this here? You know, stuff like that. So that's pretty much the end of the chapter. And then we have like, what is the reason as to why Elder David mentioned this in the first place? So theory time. Because we already know what happens at the end of this arc, meaning the Alma Tehran destruction. Here's what I'm thinking. Instead of Shiva being Ryo, oh no, not no, not real. Rank Vilquin or Lady Yokuin, if you want to call her that. Instead of her being that, Arba is possibly more likely to be Vilquin because Shiva was astonished to see their creator, but she was nothing. She, her emotion was nothing compared to Arba's. Arba was straight up crying. She was all happy to see him, but at the same time, she was mad because why would Elder David do this to 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 our God and stuff like that? Like Arba was straight the fuck up crying. And it doesn't take a genius to think, okay, so this girl might actually be uh, Lady Gilquin. Now, to further the theory, what I'm guessing now is that David wants Solomon to become God by taking the Magoi that is left from Ilila and becoming the actual god of the world itself. And the reason why I say that is because when you take a look at what's going on with the Magoi way before way before Solomon's battle, pretty much the Magoi coming from Ilila was quote unquote dense, more dense, more weird. And so we even see from the origin dragon, we even seen in this chapter, the flashback with with Sheba thinking back to what the origin dragon said, someone is trying to kill God. And instead of doing it by himself, saying, you know, let me become God, Elder David was like, you know what, fuck it, let, me, let my son become God, you know, it's, it's how destiny works. And I think that's going to be the catalyst for how al comes into play later. That's going to be the reason as to why um, Wahid, Falan, and Ethan fall to the al side. That's probably the reason why Rengio um, Quinn comes in in the first place. Pretty sure she's all right now at this point. And it's all, it's all because of the fact that Solomon helped to kill God. And of course, that's what uh, David said before, before their battle. Solomon, come with me and together, my son, we will help to kill God. So I think that's the reason as to why they create the al because Solomon may take up the Mago in himself, like, you know what? Our Ili La is not good enough of a god. I'm going to be that god instead. So I think that's the reason as to why they create al in the first place, because technically speaking, Solomon, yes, did try and kill God, even if it was for the betterment of Al Amaturan. And that's probably the whole reason as to why Amaturan is destroyed in the first place. So, the writing of this chapter, the art was nice. It was nice. When the dimension, like when, what's his name? Um, Solomon, when he was going through dimensions and stuff, I like how the pages were like turning into each other and shit. I, I thought that was pretty cool. So, the artwork, I'm going to give that a good plus. It was good plus artwork. When it comes to the pacing, the pacing will actually give that good plus as well because it was a good plus pacing. We actually moved a lot farther. And when it comes to story progression, I'm actually give that a great because we're now actually seeing where God came from in the first place, where God is in that dimension. And this will be the catalyst for what comes on later. So 
good plus and good plus with a grade that automatically makes it a good plus. So this is going to be a good plus chapter of Monty. So tell me your thoughts on my little theory. I think this is the way to go. I think this is what's going to happen. And um, do you think that Arba is Gyokuin? I mean, it's pretty obvious that she is, but that's what I think personally. And what do you think might else happen? Is there something that I missed that you guys thought was obvious as well? Or is there something that I might not see now? But it'll it'll be like like a surprise later because we already know what happens at the end of this arc. You know, Amaterasu's destruction. We just don't know exactly how it happened. So again, don't take what I said like immediately as truth. Take it as a theory that makes sense. So all right. So good plus chapter of Maki. Uh, like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. I'm Oja Senpai.